All right, today is the day in step number four in the Arate Supercar Project. Um, I have here a piece of foam. This is kind of a, one of the methods you could have used to build a full-size model or the plug for this car. But we have opted for building it in plaster. And in this step and going through this whole process, I'm going to tell you a little bit why we chose to go that way and why it's my preferred method of building a full-size model like this. Anyway, let's go take a look at what we did. We left off building a bunch of ribs and stacking them on our frame. We need to create a way now to put burlap and plaster on there without it falling through and joining each of the ribs together. And I do this with the string that you see here. This string is applied just by taking a tool and cutting a little notch at each one of the thin plywood ribs and running a hemp twine back and forth between the strings about half an inch, three quarters of an inch apart. And then the burlap's laid over those strings. And if you remember in the, the last step, we built these wheel well and lined them with a piece of metal to keep the burlap from filling the wheel well. Where the string can't actually join to that sheet metal, I just went ahead and put a piece of foam in there. The plaster and the burlap will cover that foam and just blend it all together. Now the, the burlap won't fall through the strings and that's the whole purpose of it. And it'll stiffen up the whole process. The burlap is put on by just dipping it into a real runny mixture of plaster, a little, probably the consistency of uh, runny oatmeal. Once it's put onto the framework itself, it bonds immediately to the strings and the ribs and holds in place. You can see I'm doing it on a vertical surface here. Dip it in the plaster, squeeze it out, try to keep the edges nice and flat. And you can see that the burlap actually sags between the ribs, which is good because we're going to fill that with plaster later. And of course here on the rotisserie is the full car coated in the first layer of burlap and plaster. It makes a nice rigid structure, nice and stiff, ready for the next stages of plaster work. One of the benefits of this plaster method is that uh, you have a problem it's easy to just cut it out. Now fitting the windshield became something that we needed to uh, cut away again some more of the plaster work here. And then we're gonna fill around the windshield. Once it was set in place, I just take plaster mixed up and take a grout bag. You can find it at a Mason resupply store or a big box supply store, they might have one. And you're just gonna inject the plaster right around the windshield and this windshield came is out of a Chevy Cavalier and it comes with a rubber gasket seal around it so the plaster being injected around it fits exactly to that rubber seal making us so we don't have to create some special technique to carve a gap for our windshield we actually form around the windshield itself now to keep the plaster from sticking the windshield I use a a kitchen saran wrap that's kind of got a light tacky feel to one side of it and that just sticks to the glass wrap it around smooth it on tightly to the glass inject that plaster around it once the windshield pops out the plaster is not stuck to the releasing agent which is the saran wrap and then finally just smooth it in against the glass with the squeegee and then we'll build up more plaster against it as you see here the plaster on the sides getting closer to finished blending right to the edge of the windshield now one thing that you're gonna see here is a big change take place because the windshield comes out and then I've cut away a couple of ribs and created the dashboard and you can see this fine groove there where the windshield gasket's gonna fit but what's going to happen is I'm going to take the next step. I'm going to build the hood is going to go over the top of the windshield itself. So when I go to take molds, I will actually have to take a mold off of the hood, tear it off, and then take a mold off of the dashboard body or tub of the vehicle. But this is the beauty of plaster. So here are the windshields in place, the hoods being built. This is about the third stage of putting on plaster. I just apply it either by smearing it right on with my hand or with a squeegee as you see here. 
And as I showed you before, when you are able to just take a saw and cut out places, you can go back to another piece of burlap to fill the hole, go right on to building up the plaster. Now once you get to these second and third stage coats of plaster, I use a drywall mud, which is doesn't have to be mixed. You could just go ahead and take it right out of the bucket or the box, put it on and it just air dries. If you get it thick, it does crack, but you can just go back to the next layer, fill all the cracks. The cracks I'm talking about. Of course, you do have some high spots. I just take a file, one of these serrated files. Works great to knock down all the high spots. All you have to do is knock down the high spots and go back and fill again until you get a fairly smooth versus. Once you get a good smooth surface, I move on and start using drywall sanding screens like sandpaper but it's made out of a screen so that the dust from the drywall mud goes right through the screen and doesn't clog up. And of course, once you get to the fourth and fifth layers, the car starts to get fairly smooth. The trowel or whatever you're using to apply it with starts jumping all the gaps and making a nice smooth surface. Of course, it does a little skill gets developed after you've got a few layers on. Anyway, this is the rough of application of plaster, and that's how we do it here. Now I want to close this video as promised to tell you why we're doing this model in plaster rather than foam. Now foam is a, kind of an industry standard now if we have uh, CNC carving machines, but we have two things that are stopping us from going that route. The first being the expense of going with foam, and the second being the time it takes to create a 3D model. We have to have a model that's perfect for that CNC to cut it because we don't have the opportunity to add back to the foam. Once the foam's cut, you get what you get. Of course, even really advanced systems have, they can cut the foam and then extrude a hard coating onto it and then machine that down. That's what's done in the automotive industry at the very highest levels. But we're working with plaster because we have a budget we're trying to keep in and the plaster is fairly inexpensive. So beyond the expense, we do have, like I said, the ability to keep adding to our project, meaning that we can build the base, the frame, put some plaster on there, and then as you've seen, we can just subtract some of that. We have a problem, we can cut it off, repair it, keep adding to it, we can change our design completely if we need to. Anyway, this process seems to work very well and I've done it many times over the years and kind of perfected it with some different techniques and hopefully those things have shown through here. If you have any questions, go ahead and put those into the comments and I'd be glad to answer anything you have to say. Anyway, thanks for watching. Come back and see us again.